Hello and uh, welcome to another playbook. Today we are going to talk about games. Now, as some of you might know, I've spent a big chunk of my career building games and running game studios and, and running uh, some incredibly large games. Uh, and I've spent a much, much longer time playing games. I started playing games when I was very young and I've sort of played board games and video games and online games and mobile games and every every possible type of game. And I love games. And I genuinely believe that I am, whatever little success that I have had as a product manager uh, can very easily sort of be attributed to the fact that I'm first and foremost a gamer and that I learned some incredibly valuable lessons from the world of games. And I genuinely believe that for all product builders, whether you are an engineer, a designer, or a product manager, there is a lot to be learned from the world of games. It's hyper competitive. You know, when you work on a product, right? You know, you work in e-commerce or you work in uh, in mobility or you work in fintech. You're competing with three, four, five, maybe ten other competitors, maybe twenty other competitors. When you work in the world of games, you compete with mil millions and millions of other apps, right? You're fighting for people's very time, and this forces you to build products which stand out. And in games delight and the product is a big moat in itself and this is this is something uh which which is such a great lesson for all all product builders right how do you turn your product into a genuine moat uh how do you build something which is so delightful that people are ready to give their time and effort uh into your product uh how, how, something which engages users again and again so there's a lot to learn from games so I think what I'm going to do is over a series of videos, talk about the various things that we can learn from games. And today's first video is about difficulty curves in games and what we can learn as product builders from this. Right. So let's jump in. Uh, as I usually like, let's start with a story. So there's a young girl and uh, she wakes up in her village and she's all alone in her house. There's nobody else around and she can smell smoke and she can hear crying in the distance. And as she steps out of her house, she realizes that her entire village is on fire and she can't find her parents anywhere and she can't see anyone else here. Something really bad has happened. As she turns around, she's in, she encounters a really ra large rat monster and she runs and she finds, uh, she runs back into her house and she finds her dad's old wooden sword. So she picks it up. And she defends herself against this rat monster and she parries and parries and then finally she's able to land a blow and the rat monster dies. But her sword is also broken. As she walks further ahead, she finds a metal sword. So she, she finds a sword which is uh, much better than her dad's old wooden sword. And now she fights some more rat monsters. With a metal sword, it's easier to defeat them and so on and so forth. Right Now this story is a very typical adventure game storyline, right? And why is it typical? It's typical because a hero finds a weapon. The hero finds the first enemy with some difficulty. The hero wins. Hero meets more enemies. Hero loses health. Hero heals. Hero upgrades weapon. And finally, hero finds it easier to defeat enemies till the enemies become stronger and then the hero has to go through this upgrade loop all over again, right? So stronger enemies always emerge, right? Trying to defeat you. So you have to become stronger. Now, this is sort of the difficulty curve, right? When we talk about difficulty, as you start playing the game and as time goes by, the difficulty of the game goes up, but it's not a linear loop which goes up. There are ups and downs. There are local maximas and local minimas. And let's talk about that. If you zoom in on a part of that curve, you would realize that there is rising difficulty, which is, whoa, I'm going to die. And then there's a local maxima, which is really difficult. This is usually a boss fight. This is where a nasty boss hits you right in the face. And, you know, you have to use all the skills that you have acquired so far to defeat the boss. And then things ease up a little bit. You feel as a player that you're getting a hang of it. And this is where sort of the curve goes down. It gives you a little bit of respite. It lets you use the newfound powers that you've figured out. Usually after a boss fight, the next level is, is, is typically easier. And then you hit a local minima, right? And you're like, hey, this is this this is great. This is uh, this is fantastic. Now I can be ready for the next challenge, 
right? And this is this is essentially the this curve is a slowly upward moving curve, but it goes up, it goes down, it goes up and goes down, and which is why games are so much fun. There's an alternate difficulty curve. You start the game and right up front, the big bad boss of the game meets you and you are thrashed. You are within inches of losing your life, right? Because you're not powerful at all. You, you haven't figured out the game yet. You haven't learned the game. So left for dead because the boss is too difficult and you escape. You just barely escape. And then you start from scratch. And then you slowly build up the same curve that we spoke about on the previous slide. You slowly build up difficulty. You have local ma maximas where you meet smaller bosses and you know minimas where you have a moment of respite. So rising difficulty, local maximas, you start getting a hang of things and then local minimas. Now, in general, this difficulty curve is a lot more interesting because right up front in a game, you, you, you know, you're introduced to the big bad and you know that you actually will play the entire game to finally meet this big bad boss in the final battle. And by then, you would be very well equipped to defeat this boss. It will still be difficult, but you would have all the weapons at your disposal and you would have mastered a bunch of things about the game to actually fight the good fight against this boss. Now, what are the lessons for product builders from the fact that games and well-designed adventure games have these amazing difficulty curves and most games have difficulty curves of their own. They're easy to play, but difficult to master, right? And that's the hallmark of any good game that getting into a game is fairly straightforward. But over time, you sort of realize that to really master the game, you, you know, it, it, it's difficult. You have to go through a lot of hoops. Now, what you essentially want to do is you have to realize that every product also has a difficulty curve. So think of all the funnels. So when a new user onboards onto your product, you know, your onboarding funnel of your product is sort of a difficulty curve. It's the first time the user is going to add, um, you know, their name and build their profile. It's the first time the user is going to search for a product on your e-commerce website. It's the first time the user is going to look at the right SKU, click on it, try and add their address, make a payment, right? All of these represent a certain level of difficulty for users. So each product by its very nature has difficulty curves, right? And you need to understand them. Break apart your different parts of the funnels of your product and see what difficulty curves your, your product follows. So users are learning new actions and new functionality at each step, but are they enjoying it, right? That rising sense of difficulty, that local maxima, does it lead to a local minima where they feel like, wow, okay, this is easy. I know it. I've searched for a product now. I can search for another product. I purchased something. I will find it much easier to purchase something else next time. Oh, I have to search for a completely new type of product. That's a different learning curve. So repeated actions are critical for the success of your product, right? The user should feel that over time, usage of your product is becoming easier and easier for them that they are mastering it. You want to provide that dopamine rush of mastering a functionality successfully. You want users to see that nice big blue tick mark which comes when you order on Swiggy because it feels like, well, I've ordered a, I've ordered a meal successfully, right? It's such a good uh, feeling. And repeated use still needs to be delightful. This is the hallmark of good games. Repeated actions are still delightful. In a first-person shooter game, the headshot is always fun. In a bubble shooter, each time those bubbles explode, or in a match three game, when you match three gems together and they explode and go out of the game board, it happens hundreds of thousands of times if you play those games long enough, but they are fun and they are joyful each time. That is how each and every action in your product should be. Every time you order, you should feel a great sense of delight. Every time you finish a transaction, it should you should feel like there's a great sense of uh, of joy that has descended on the user. So what is the journey from user to power user, right? Now, the thing is, regular products don't have an upward rising difficulty curve. At some point, your difficulty curve would stagnate, right? At that point, your power users need more, and which is why that is when you found product market fit, but you now are looking for more difficulty curves to give your users. There are more hills to climb, more local maximas, and more bosses to vanquish. And this is where you want to you, you want to add more functionality to your product. Right? It's a great time for you to know that there are a lot of users who find great value in your product and have mastered the usage of your product. Right. So these are some of the lessons for product builders, right? Uh, from the world of games. Uh, Difficulty curves are a phenomenal concept to just understand and imbibe. Uh, I always tell people, play a lot of games. There's just so much there to learn about the core loops of games and how games maximize usage time. So 
I hope you learned something from this uh, and uh, I hope you're enjoying these playbooks. Uh, do subscribe to the channel and see you soon for another video on what all we can learn from the world of games as product builders. Take care. Bye.